Hi there. Okay, so everybody, or at least 50 to 80% of the people I know have got one of these. Been given an unwanted gift and you tried it once with all good intentions. Must have got all stuck and gooey and it's sitting in the cupboard. It's about time to put it to use. All right, so today we're going to make pasta and then I'm going to make an age old favorite that everybody loves carbonara with mushrooms, flour, eggs, salt. Not that much, just a pinch. Flour's in plus the salt, eggs. I'm using the hook. This is for pancakes, this is for cream, and anything in between. Something stiff, use the hook. Machine on slow. Okay, Katie Kenwood is making a bit of a Katie Kenwood noise, but that's what happens when you use machines from the 50s. Your dough must be very hard. Okay, make it as hard as you can make it. Okay, so your aim is to get it as thin as possible at the width of your pasta machine. And you use a standard old rolling pin. Why well, use just an old stick because I'm just used to that. Just keep rolling it as thin as you can by hand. Okay, use any rolling pin that you're comfortable with. Keep rolling, keep rolling, keep rolling. The thinner you make it now, the easier it becomes with the machine. All we do is I pat it into the thickness I want and I go in the one direction. Just helps you to get the same width of the machine that you need. Pasta ready to go into the machine. Throw a bit of flour onto your board or your table that you're using. Take the pasta exactly where it is, put it into there. Open up your machine to the wider setting and then get, just roll it through. When you've rolled it out, throw a little bit of flour. Okay, your aim is to get the texture of the pasta to a plasticky kind of texture. All right, this takes about five or six times going through exactly the same process, rolling it out, throwing a little bit of flour, folding it over. Feed it back into the machine, roll it out, throw a bit of flour. Okay, that was a bit of a workout. I'm spoiled. I've normally got an electronic one. Uh, but probably get a couple of the kids together. They can roll, they can catch the pasta, have some fun around it. Now you'll see the pasta has stiffened up a little bit. I'm on the thickest setting of the machine. Now what I'll do is I'll knock it down by one or two every time. I just drop the handle and then I'll just make it as thin as I can to the machine. Okay, so we finished rolling. I was just talking to Michelle. Michelle said, no, this is too hard, babe. It takes too long. I said, well, getting into the car, I'm going to the supermarket. Essentially, this has taken us about five, six minutes so far. And we've probably got about 20 meters of pasta here. As you're taking it, you fold it like a book and then not quite 20 meters, probably about six or seven meters of pasta. But all of these machines come with one of these. So that's fettuccine, that's linguine. Don't worry too much about it. What you're going to do now is you're just going to cut the length you want your pasta. All right. I'm going to show you a couple of other pastas as well if you want to. If you want lasagna, some lasagna sheets. If you want pappadelle, pappadelle is a thick ribbon pasta. You take it there or you want a little bit thinner, take it there and you've got thick noodles. Clip on your attachment and let the machine roll through. <laughs> and there you have your fettuccine. What I do normally, if I'm not going to use it immediately, I either freeze it but before I freeze it, I just roll it in a bit of flour. You can dry these, but freezing is normally the best. While I'm waiting for the water to boil, I'm just gonna prep up the um, carbonara. As in always, prep up your, all your ingredients so you don't have chopping in between the cooking. It's in the way. Onion and garlic's chopped. My, be my beautiful homemade garlic, uh, garlic. <laughs> 
It's bacon, not garlic. My beautiful homemade bacon, chopped. Mushrooms chopped. I'm using thyme and oregano, chopped. If you're not growing your um, herbs, I suggest you start growing them. It's a beautiful thing. It's a little different to the way I'd normally cook, but I'm taking the bacon. I'm not using any oil or stuff like that. The bacon's got enough fat, and I'm adding the mushrooms at the same time. Just until the mushrooms are cooked, I take them out. Ooh, whoops. I'll right, scrape that out. Knob of butter, onions and garlic. Now I'm going to deglaze de this with a little bit of white wine, mushrooms and bacon back inside. Add your milk, add your cream. Now I've separated my eggs and I thicken the sauce up with it. Milk and cream is boiling. Take it off the stove. Add a little bit of the cream and milk to the egg yolk. If you're going to add the egg yolk directly into the hot um, milk, it will split and you'll have scrambled eggs. Add it back into the sauce. Beautiful and stiff. You can see it's just, just enough to coat pasta. Now you can take a little bit of parmesan, it will help stabilize it also for flavor and then we leave the rest of the parmesan on top water is finally boiling it took that long i'm going to add some pasta into a very deep pot of water your pasta's been in the pot a while give it a bit of a test if it sticks to the wall you're ready <laughs> if you put too much as i did it probably stick together a little bit but it's all cooked, it's all ready to go. Steam off for a bit, get rid of all that resident um, water. Add it to the pasta sauce. There's a bit too much pasta sauce in here, but that's fine. Kieran's not gonna mind because he'll drink this stuff, I know. Only, if you're using fresh herbs, only add your herbs at the end. It'll infuse. Herbs are delicate, the oils in the herbs are even more delicate. Season a little bit of salt, a little bit for grandma, a little bit of pepper, a little bit more salt, stir it in. I think a little bit more salt. Uh, salt. <laughs> Mixy. Beautiful pasta. Parmesan. Karen, there's a tree. Some more parmesan because I like parmesan. Taste. Kieran's tasting for us again. 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 